We are here in Hollywood Boulevard today and we are headed to the red carpet premiere for Bike Riders. We're all dressed up, we're in suits. Look, Carrie's behind the camera over here, all dressed up. <laughs> Look like I work the event, huh? <laughs> like I should be checking people's IDs. This is going to be an awesome episode because after this, we're going to be able to go in and chat with the stars of the film. Austin Butler, Jodie Comer, and Tom Hardy. Hey, Gene, how are you? I hope they have snacks in there. <laughs> That's what you're wondering. Oh, look, the director just got here, Jeff Nichols. So we'll also be chatting with Jeff. He does really incredible work for relatively small budgets. I also once got a chance to ask a big director for one piece of advice, and he said to take acting classes. This is like over 10 years ago, so I've procrastinated. But today's the day, so I actually tracked down Austin Butler's acting coach. That is Howard Fiennes, Hollywood's best acting coach. Howard has worked with many big name stars. And we get to learn a little bit about what it means to be an actor. Also, check it out. I got a little POV camera down here, the Insta360 Go 3. So huge thank you to Insta360 for sponsoring this episode. Let's get going. I've seen you on that Triumph, Ducatis, electric dirt bikes. What was it like riding around in these vintage Harleys? It was a thing of beauty. They were great, they were wonderful for like five minutes. And then I wanted to get back on my, uh, <laughs> on my Triumph. Was it the braking? Yeah, and like steering and or like, I tell you what though, they are very comfortable to sit on. They are comfortable. I haven't sat on a bike as comfortable, but I don't know if I would keep one because they're hard work. Bike Riders, amazing film, one of my personal favorites now. What was it about the film that drew you into this project? Jeff, I wanted to work with Jeff. I have a, a lot of actors I've worked with him that I respect and a couple of them are friends as well who, who love working with him too. And so I was, I was drawn to work with Jeff. Obviously a director and actor relationship is so key. What do you think it is that a director can do in terms of making you feel like you want to work with them? Establish a level of confidence, have the ability to create a dialogue which can be trusted in the here and now in order to go on an adventure or a journey together of which, you know, you're both responsible to contribute towards the project that you embark on and trust is earned by experience and going through stuff together. So for me, I can feel when I want to take a journey with somebody. They could be the greatest director in the world, but if I don't feel them, I don't want to go on a journey. <laughs> you know, it's about how I feel when I'm in company with that person. So what's lovely is when you meet somebody as talented as Jeff, who you want to go on a journey with, then that's special. I'm sure you heard the saying, 90% of directing is casting. Is that something you agree with? Is it 90%? Yes, I agree with that. The more successful I get in my career, the more famous people I get to meet. And they're famous for a reason, and they're great people. That being said, there is the right person for the right part. I believe it. The same way as there's the right place to shoot. It's my job to hold in mind who that character is, to make sure that I'm not just casting the most famous person or even the most likable person, but I'm casting the right person. And I've had a lot of luck in my career doing that. Um, it's all instinctual. It's all in my gut. When I met Austin Butler, Elvis hadn't come out. There really wasn't the calculus of how that film would do or what that film would do for his career. But I met him and I saw something in him and it's paid off. Is there anything that makes a filmmaker or director great to work with? Creating an environment that you feel that you can take risks in. And it, there's always fear involved because sometimes you can do things that are quite embarrassing, you know, or you push it to a level that <laughs> yeah. you go too far and to know that you can go out on the edge of this limb. And if you fall off, you, you're going to be held, you know, and, and um, I've seen other directors that if you do something, they make you feel that you immediately did something wrong and that uh, it's the way that you communicate, you know, I yeah. think is is huge because yeah. because then you stop taking chances if you if if you feel like they're gonna say, no, you did that wrong, and suddenly you're like, oh no, you start playing smaller and smaller. It's a director yeah. that can make you feel safe as an Yeah, actor. safe, safe, and, and can communicate. For me, I feel like communication is everything. You know, I want to be directed. <laughs> You know, like I want that conversation to be going throughout the whole process. I want it to be playful. And I really love it when directors, you can feel that they're very invested in the character. And yeah, oh yes, okay, it visually looks amazing and, 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 and epic, but ultimately, you know, it's about these people and audiences believing what they're seeing. So I feel like being directed in, a, in, in that kind of playful way. Yeah. One of the things I've always appreciated about your work is how you've managed to make big films with small budgets. That developed in film school, you know? Uh, I went to North Carolina School of the Arts. I remember it was the, the late 90s and in an American independent cinema at the time, um, some of it kind of looked like crap. 
But we were watching films by Malik. We were watching films by David Lean. We wanted to make beautiful films. And there was a guy ahead of us named David Gordon Green, who's become a really great filmmaker. And when David set out to make his first film, George Washington, he shot it on film with these beautiful anamorphic lenses. And I said, that's what I want to do. It's not just an approach in terms of camera and lenses, even on the page. You're writing things that are very regionally specific. They're very specific to a place and a people but you're thinking about something of scale, a scale of emotion, you know, um, a scale of story that despite uh, either its budget or even its place, you're treating it like it is epic. And that's something that got brought out when I was in film school. And it's something I've tried to execute in, in all of my films. I don't think I've ever really heard the uh, pre-production side from an actor's perspective. I guess a big thing is kind of get into grips with the material, you know, kind of dissecting the material that you have at hand and starting to build a character from the grind, uh, from the grind, from the ground up. Just grinding her out. Just grinding her out. <laughs> this was the first kind of project I've done where I had like a real kind of lovely amount of source material. You know, we had the photography book by Danny Lyon and I also had audio of Kathy being interviewed by him in the 1960s. So it was just like I had all this kind of stuff to embrace and kind of delve into. So I think that's the biggest thing is just making sure that you're kind of, you feel grounded in what you're going to do so that when you get to set, you're comfortable and you're ready to kind of show it, mm. <laughs> do it's it. It's really well put. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Because I I, heard, I listened to some of the audio as well. And you got it, to see some of the Kathy audio? Oh, yeah, the original audio. Yeah, yeah isn't I it amazing? To some of that. She's it was dead like, on. wow. Uh, well, I said, who's the good looking blind? I said, he don't look like the rest of these guys, you know? You don't want to go out with him. Why not? They don't look like the rest of these animals. And I was shooting the breeze with her, and all of a sudden, Benny came up behind me. Well, so what are we doing here? Just uh, shooting the breeze? And I know you uh, direct everything you write, and you write everything you direct. You think that'll ever change? I hope it doesn't change. I would be terrified to walk onto a set with a script that I didn't write. I direct on the page. I know when I show up exactly how these things are going to go. And that doesn't mean I'm inflexible on set. In fact, I tell the actors, look, we're all here to discover this and try to do something honest between action and cut. That's all that matters. All of this equipment, all these trailers, all this money that's getting spent, it really doesn't matter. What matters is, can you do something in a completely artificial environment that feels honest in this short period of time? Do what you do, but if you ever get lost, if you ever need to know where you are, just ask me, because I know exactly where you're supposed to be, because I wrote it. And so I couldn't imagine directing something that I didn't write. Never say never. Uh, maybe one day I'll just need a paycheck. All right, now it's time to head over to our very first acting class. I spent all day memorizing two pages worth of script and I admit it was quite difficult. It took me all day and I'm struggling with it. By the way, how awesome is this camera angle that you're looking at right now? This is thanks to our sponsor's camera, the Insta360 X4. These 360 cameras completely revolutionized how motorcyclists record their rides like I am right now. Because fun fact, 10 years ago, some of my earliest YouTube uploads were us riding. Looking back on the footage, it looks like absolute trash. And at the time I was using the best action cameras that were available, either that or I would actually bring my DSLR with manual focus and everything and try to record that, which I uh, do not recommend, super sketchy. Flash forward to 10 years later, all I gotta do is I magnetically attach it, boom it out. And now it's recording everything in 360 so I can go in afterwards and frame out the shot how I want it. Also check it out, I just upgraded my comm systems to a Cardo so I can talk to everybody on rides and what's cool is it links directly to the x4 so i can record our conversations i think i'm recording the audio in our conversation so, so I don't can... say anything <laughs> private <laughs> <laughs> and as my helmet camera i have this nice low profile insta 360 go 3s which just came out so i'm starting to test it out and it's the same thing i was wearing at the premiere i like to call it the action camera for social events but i actually really love it as a helmet camera because when i disconnect it from the charging case the image still continues to show up on the screen because usually with a helmet cam there's a lot of guesswork on its framing or if it's even recording because it's attached to your face it's kind of hard to like see what it's doing right the camera itself is mounted with this quick release system which is magnetic but also has a latch for safety and it itself is magnetic so it's really easy to take it off and attach it to different things get different angles now the go 3 has been out for about a year or so now and shares many of the same features but this go 3 s is new features like 4k better slow motion better waterproofing and all that but you want to know the feature that i personally think is most exciting so if you drop and lose the camera like several of my friends have so far now you can actually just go and locate it with the find my 
app on iPhone and now seeing that this tiny little camera can have that feature. I want all my cameras to have that feature, honestly. Like, links down there in the description if you're interested. All right, so we have made it to the acting studio. This is an actor's playground. <laughs> we call it an actor's gym. So you've been um, teaching actors for, was a it a quarter time. of a century, was it? <laughs> Full time since 1983. Oh, wow. Um, before you were born. Uh, here, <laughs> here are door units. Okay, because it's very important in so many scenes to come through a door or exit through a door. And just doing that gives you a sense of reality. Stove, refrigerator, everything's on wheels. Trying to learn to act without the props is akin to trying to learn to play baseball without the ball, the bat, the bases, the glove. The reason so many people think they can act is because great acting looks effortless, but isn't. So the Olympics are coming up. I'm not sitting on my couch thinking, Oh, that diving competition looks simple. <laughs> right. right. Great acting looks easy. It looks effortless. Mm. You don't see the technique. Right. Which is why everyone thinks they can do it until they try. Doing this YouTube thing, you know, I'm on camera and I'm talking to the camera, but I can only film if I'm just going off the top of my head. Once I go, oh, I need to deliver a line or read a script, I get so stuck and I, I choke up and then I watch back the footage and I go, oh, I, I like, I look so fake. Everything you are as a human being, uh -huh. you can be as an actor. You need the tools to know how to do that. Everyone's having a great time and someone says, oh, let's take a picture. And suddenly everybody loses their personality <laughs> because they're thinking about how they're gonna present themselves for the camera. Right. Our goal is to be private and public, to mm. be as free as you just were when the camera's rolling. You teach a lot of experienced actors here in Hollywood. Do you also teach some beginners? Yeah, and some people who started as beginners and have gotten all the way to the awards podium, Austin Butler being one of them, started in technique class here right after he just done some work on Nickelodeon. And he spent 10 years of training, even between acting gigs, he'd come right back to the home gym and put up scene work. I once asked the director, it was one piece of advice you could give me if I wanted to go down the path of filmmaking, and he said, take an acting class. 100% right I've had a lot of directors come through because once you've done it you understand the process directors very often speak to the actors in results I want this be that I never speak to actors in results I ask you to contact specific things from your life the why not the how then they become actors directors and actors love them and then of course there's also the do nots for directors. And I know one of them is line reading. Oh God, yes. That's like, that's like one of the big red flags. Could you tell us about line reading yes, and what it is? That's doing it for the actor. Right. Can you say it like this? And saying it for them. Oh my God, that's terrible. So that's one of the big do nots. That's one of the big. <laughs> You're treating the actor as if they're just a pawn to be moved. Right. To do what you want them to do. Right. Rather than a colleague who is going to make you look good. You're casting somebody who's got a process, who has a craft. Mm -hmm. So you have to trust that you've hired a professional and it brings the best out. Directors do not help the actors get into character. The hospital administrator is not going to teach the surgeon how to operate. The surgeon's got to bring those skills. They know what they want the surgeon to do. Right. But you're in charge of knowing how to work. Right. So the director's not there to teach you your craft. You should have learned that before you got to set. The director doesn't help me get the character. They, they have an idea for a character and whether or not I can meet their expectations is another, is another thing. The yeah. exciting thing is you bring together a bunch of professionals who are all really good. Right. And they start to play. What makes us interesting to watch is what's animal in us. Right. What's present. The eye will always go to what's really alive. And so what you want is not to try to program the actor, but to nurture their creativity so it brings out their best so they can be moment to moment. I know another thing that you had mentioned is that actors should never try to direct another actor. Ever. Yeah. Ever. It's kind of an unwritten code that you don't sort of interfere with like another you know, actor's work. Like it's like if I was saying, let me help you. <laughs> if we play tennis, uh -huh. it would be as if I said to you, okay, in order for me to hit it back, you need to hit it here. <laughs> <laughs> no. I get asked, what if the other actor's not giving me anything? And I'll say Tom Hanks played opposite a volleyball in Castaway. And he made that relationship so real, I cried. Right. Because he lost his best friend. Yeah. And they'll look and go, okay, if he can play opposite a volleyball, <laughs> don't tell me the other actor's not giving you anything. <laughs> Imagine that's bourbon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just take a sip and let it burn. It burns. 
So remember, that's got a smell, yeah. a heavy smell, which then floats up and affects you. But it's numbing. Or it's just yeah. real bourbon. I think my acting would be better. If no, I it wouldn't. <laughs> Why would you be drinking during the day? You're medicating pain to connect to that pain. We treat our lives as source material. I love to say civilians live with their pain. Artists create from it. It's about authenticity and connection. Because think about it, the camera is an x-ray. Anything you do that's artificial will be magnified. I get asked all the time, what's the difference between stage, television, and film? Not a lot. Good acting on stage is good acting on film. But bad acting is worse on film because the camera will magnify it. So anything you do that's fake, we'll see it. What you load in is who am I? Where am I? What time is it? What just happened? What's the rest of my day? What was yesterday? Mr. Sims, I'm Special Agent Kenzie Bly, NCIS. This is Detective Marty Deeks, LAPD. I already spoke to the police. And we're sorry for your loss. I lost my wife months ago. Only now she's dead. Did she have any enemies? Only the ones inside her. Okay. So was I um, not the worst Brad I've ever Pitt seen? level, not, or is not, that not? <laughs> not the worst I've ever seen. How's that for a compliment? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still at the point where I try to memorize these lines, and if I'm not reading this, that's all my brain is thinking about is, uh, how, what's this next line? And It's a lot more than just memorizing the lines. Oh, yeah. absolutely. That's, yeah. that's, I don't even think about memorizing lines. No. Person, Although mean, it is a big part. <laughs> it's I, a massive part, it but. It's tedious and it takes work. Yeah. I went to see the uh, LA Philharmonic and I thought, how many hours of practice do those musicians put in? Because it's not just about playing the notes, is it? Right, right. Yeah. It's, Feeling the music. Artistry, mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. artistry at every level. Right. And you think you have to have the discipline to do the tedious work in order to get the freedom to play. I'm actually a huge Austin Butler fan. Seeing him go from being Elvis to then in Dune and now to Bike Riders. It was funny because it wasn't until recently until I realized he was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I was like, wait, and I rewatched it. And it's like, oh, that is Austin Butler. Like what? Unrecognizable. Would you call that range in acting? Be able to yeah, just you have, be, well, cause he yeah. has access to every part of his own personality. Mm, He'd been doing right. that work in scene study here for years, stretching himself out so that he could develop this technique. Acting is not about being other than who you are, but it's about being all of who you are. Austin is not a fluke. It's a well-built career where he put in a lot of work at the fundamental level. One of the things I thought was fascinating was how you said, once you've been acting for so long, you've become the most empathetic person. You should. Yeah. On the planet. Right, because you understand the purpose. You've justified people from all walks of life. Right. You have to see everybody you play as right and good and justified. We never identify the antagonist and the protagonist. We're all the heroes of our own story. According to my friend, the noted rabbi and author Joseph Telushkin, we judge ourselves by our intentions and others by their actions. And so negative behavior doesn't incorporate into my self-concept. I feel justified in everything I do. If you look at a role and you, you say that's not me, that's a part of yourself you don't see. It's interesting because you talked about how some acting coaches may be like, oh yeah, emphasize this or do this. It's or bad training. Maybe like, yeah, I guess in my head, that's kind of what I was imagining an was. acting class would be. Right. Like do it like this or say this part louder or feel, but you don't do. We might as well be AI. You can program <laughs> AI to do that. So here you are sitting in a welding shop. Not a glamorous place to be sitting drinking. And if they never showed up, what would the rest of the day be for you? Drinking more bourbon. Yeah. Replaying everything that you could have done that might have helped her. Hating yourself. And you know what? Let's switch to a wooden chair. It seems like a lot of acting is not just trying to make somebody else believe no, what you're, you're doing. you've got to make yourself believe. Yeah. And that's, that's the hard part, really. If you uh -huh. make yourself believe, you will, we will believe you. Yeah. So you're not selling it to us. That's bad acting. Yeah. Oh yeah, this chair is much more That's firm. I'm, I'm feeling more depressed already. Right. Yeah. We think in images, not in words. Because if you told me how you met your partner, you might not tell me all the details, but they're available to you. Language is the tip of the iceberg. What we actually say is substantiated by so much more that we could say. How do I make this real for myself? So we make the acting go away. We want the acting to be completely invisible. And I can tell when somebody's eyes go blank that they don't have images, that it's not mm. specific. Now replay a fight in your own mind mm -hmm. that you've had with somebody you love. Mm -hmm. And think about something you said that you really regret saying. And imagine they died and you can't take it back. 
Mr. Sims, I'm Special Agent Ken C. Bly, NCIS. This is Detective Marty Teeks, LAPD. I already talked to the police. We're sorry for your loss. I lost my wife months ago. Only now she's dead. That was night and day from mm -hmm. the first time sitting in the comfy chair, not having a drink in your hand. You can't go to the gym one time and be in shape. Right. You would need practice yeah. doing all of this. Whenever you have a line to say, you don't just say it, but you create a foundation below it. That makes you need to say it. Wow, so it's, it's much deeper. And it is deep. <laughs> and also when you connect to real feelings, you experience it as if it just happened to you. Mm -hmm. So it's exhausting. Acting is incredibly demanding. It's not for the faint-hearted. You're having a beautiful day, then you gotta to go to the theater and kill your children. <laughs> you gotta, right. And you have to put yourself in that place. You have to be able to do it on demand, and it's not easy. Great acting looks easy. Would you say that's maybe the biggest misconception in acting? Yeah, is that's that it's one just of saying them, the words? That it's easy, and the idea of playing a character. Every character is found inside yourself. If I talk about acting, I feel really smart. If I talk about math and science, I feel dumb. <laughs> you know, all of us is a smart person and a dumb person, an outgoing person and a shy person. This is a Meryl Streep quote. Acting is not about being someone different. It's about finding the similarity in what is apparently different and then finding myself in there. That's Meryl Streep. All right, seriously, how awesome was Howard Fine, right? Like I've always known actors needed a lot of talent and skill to do what they do, but man, I just have such a bigger appreciation thing. Those bumps on this road is crazy. They're doing all this construction right now. Oh my. I mean, I honestly really enjoyed making this episode. I really like making videos where I myself get to learn a lot from it as well. And also huge shout out to the cast and crew of Bike Riders. It's so awesome to just get this like insight from the Hollywood legends. And the film itself is amazing, honestly. Now officially in theaters as of today when I upload this video. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is the type of video you want to see more of, definitely let me know down there in the comments. Anyways, I'm gonna put some stuff on the screen if you want to click on stuff subscribe like and comment and all that good stuff and uh, Yeah, see you guys later. Bye